Good morning. Good morning. This Mass is offered for Sister Bernadette Corre of the Franciscan Sisters of John the Baptist. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We take a moment, call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. <clears throat> O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, guide us, we pray, through this present life, and bring us to that light in which you dwell, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance that dwells apart in the woodland, in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead, as in the days of old, as in the days when you came from the land of Egypt. Show us wonderful signs. Who is there like you, the God who removes guilt and pardons sin for the remnant of his inheritance, who does not persist in anger forever, but delights rather in clemency, and will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our guilt. You will cast into the depths of the sea all our sins. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and grace to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. He will not always chide, nor does he keep his wrath forever. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. I will get up and go to my father and shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. 
A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he went, got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants quickly, bring the finest robes and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Today with the prodigal son, we have a good example for us in Lent, calling us to be forgiven and calling us to forgive and calling us to go to God and say, I have sinned against heaven and against you but certainly not to wait as long or to do as much as the boy did. In terms of his father, I don't know if the son knew the Lord is kind and merciful. In fact, I don't know if mercy even <clears throat> entered into his decision to return to his father. But you know his story. He spent all the money he manipulated his father to give him. He squandered his life in a life of dissipation and prostitutes until, as it often happens, Sometimes, to our good, nature took its course, and now a famine struck the country. And he found himself in dire need and hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. A problem for religious Jews, but maybe, well, maybe he wasn't anymore a religious Jew. Anyway, the boy coming to his senses at last had a sense of his sin and his betrayal of his father, and how he had spent and squandered all he probably shouldn't have had really in the first place. And with that bright bit of self-knowledge, that brief moment, he made a promise he kept. He would return to his father. Now on the way, but while he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him, filled with compassion. 
So what do you think? Do we need to return to our Father in heaven? Do we need to get up and say, go to my Father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. The boy was a sinner. And we don't need to do that if we're not sinners. So don't we know the Lord is kind and merciful and certainly filled with compassion? pray this morning in thanksgiving for one gift or one grace God has given us. And we ask him for one gift or one grace we still might need. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the repose of the souls of all those who have been killed by this plague. And we ask for the return to health and the restoration of uh, to full recovery for all those who are afflicted with it. We pray to the Lord. Lord and finally, we pray for one person we love. We pray for one person we might find difficult to love. We pray to the Lord. Lord Good and loving God, you hear our prayers and you alone know all those things we need. This morning we ask that you give us everything we ask for in fact, all according to your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And for the protection and purification of the church, we pray. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all his evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through these sacred gifts, we pray, O Lord, may our redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation. Through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through bodily fasting you restrain our faults, raise up our minds, and bestow both virtue and its rewards through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, Louis, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
And let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And here's the thing. The prodigal son was a mess, frankly, until he came to his senses at last. Do we need to come to our senses in any part of our lives? Or are we not sinners? Can't we say to God the Father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer to be served, be de deserve to be called your son or your daughter. Or are we not sinners? The Father waited for the boy in return. What remarkable faith and trust and hope in his son. And some might say the boy didn't or doesn't deserve it. Do we hope our Father is waiting for us as well, filled with compassion? Or are we not sinners? But we already know he is, don't we? So let's get on with the feasting and celebrating when we return. Or are we not sinners? And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire, have them ask what is pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, the Mass is ended.